behind it. And also, um, and there was another side to that. But Amino's principle is doesn't allow him to be stunned, or you could say, because he does. It's like he's he doesn't. From the way he's re uh, reasoning, it's it's not. It doesn't allow for that state of mind of being perplexed. That's the word they use. Hmm. Being perplexed. <coughs> perplexed. It's actually a word meaning having no way to go. So perplexed is kind of a weak translation for that. Because, at least in my opinion, because I think the whole idea is to, um, is to get reach absolute not knowing, so to speak. Isn't it translated at a, lo at a loss? Sometimes, yeah. It is. Like, this, with a confusion all poured together, complex, all bent up and folded. Those, those involve, like, puzzles that have solutions. Aparia doesn't seem to have have that ability. So what would you? Do you well, have a I, I just always hold the the image in my mind of not having any way to go. Poros is a passage through land or sea. Aparia is without any passage, and therefore no way to go. No way to go. Yeah. That's but that's what I mean. I I just kind of think about the Greek term when I use the English term. And you know, I, I mean, you're using the word stun, but you know, well, that's probably true. It's, it's stun, right? Uh, I was just using Pierre's language. I didn't see the word ah. stunned in Juan's translation. Ah. Um, well, sorry to interrupt. Um, guys, I have a function this morning that I have to, for the kiddos, so i got to run off. Well, uh, camera is running. Uh, if you do have a midwife or your dream, can the person sit next to Pierre as usual? And um, I'll check it out. From just then. turn it off when you're done. Yeah, are you gonna and be back in the area? Sometime? I will. When I, yeah, in a, in a few hours, I'll stop right. by and pick all the, the gear up. So. Are you gonna stop by to that place where you can get some answers? <laughs> are you gonna tell them the the talk that you uh, that well, we had on the way over in the car? Probably wouldn't. You? I see. Wouldn't interest them. Okay. Uh, sure would. I don't know where to get the answer for that. The model for all models. Hmm. And what's its uh, subject? Good question about model for all model. What's its subject? Do, do you want upon what do does you want it me work? to recover? A, a I do. Wow. Well, <coughs> yeah. Well, my colleague here. You have fun. Have a curious go. position. Have fun, guys. Mm, take care. Thank you. I'll have to watch this. <laughs> and he said. There's something curious about comparing shoemaking and tennis. Yeah, I bet there is. <laughs> and so, of course, I said, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. So Jeff began a little discussion and he said, well, in both cases, if you're going to master either of those, you have to master a certain kind of language appropriate for the subject. I was mm. astonished at that simplicity, you know, so mm. I bugged him more to get more. Right? Right. And I said, by the way, <coughs> does each have its own laws as well? He said, yeah, of course, don't you know that? And I said, no, I don't. But he uh, pushed it further and he said, uh, uh, then in each of those there can be a degree of excellence. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those who are committed to that kind of excellence become perfect in those particular subjects. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And what was curious about the discussion, he jumped to geometry. Oh. I would be curious. Okay. And he said, he said, don't you think that there's a certain kind of language in geometry you have to know? If you don't know, you're not going to be able to do it. Yep. I quickly said yes. Good. Yeah. That would have been my move. Yeah. And he said, um, 
Don't you think it also requires a certain way of reasoning with those terms to get to conclusions? You said yes. I said quickly oh. said yes. Yes, yes, yes. And again, there's a certain excellence that can be mastered in it if one is committed to it and has the background appropriate for it. Yes. I quickly said yes. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Joel. Oh, 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 good. Well, it, it got rather peculiar at this point because uh, he's pretty much into mathematics and the history of mathematics. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, so he said, uh, did you know that uh, Copernicus had a model for the universe? Hmm. And it was called the mathematical model, Copernican model. And I said, yeah, I heard about it. He said, well, when he wrote his paper, hmm. he had an introduction where he said uh, to the church, excuse me, Pope, mm -hmm. uh, this is just mathematically true. Theologically, I still believe the way in which the, the church teaches. Because <laughs> he liked the position of, of his head on his shoulders. <laughs> yeah. He liked the arms on the body. He didn't want yeah. those, either of those removed. Yeah. Yeah. A certain amount of forethought was put into that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then he went on and said, you know, each model in mathematics only allows a certain degree of, of approximation to its goal. Hmm. And he mentioned uh, in calculus, you know, there's a mm. theory of limits, you get as close as you please to the object, it's therefore it's always approximation. Mm. What did you say? I said, you mean they, they can't reach truth? He said, no. no, no, no. no. But you can see whether your conclusions are valid or not. But you can't reach truth because it's always approximation. Mm. And validity has to do with what? Appropriate use of language? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Only. So then he said, hey, it's equally true for physics, you know, subatomic physics. He was into that kind of stuff. <coughs> that the, hmm. And he said, equally well, there's something curious about all the language of mathematics. All the terms are the same. That okay. is, there's no specific reference to anything in nature. Hmm. Right? They're all empty, like one, two, three, four. Do they all also not a, not attain to truth like um, calculus? They all. That's where he was going. Mm, sorry. Mm. He said, but you do get approximations. Mm. And then he, he, I said, so what? Well, that's where he said, uh, you have to assume there's some parallel between reality and the language that you're using. I said, but the language you're using is empty of all terms, any meaningful terms. Wow. They're all empty. Because they don't have a... That's, what, that was an interesting position for you to take, Pierre. I you didn't would not, he took it. Oh, he took the position that even though there were I no correspondences to the outside world, yeah. never, hmm, though that, that makes them empty. Well, He took that position. Well, see, hmm. like all of the mathematical terms have nothing to do with reality. You want, right? Oh, that's a different thing. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. Reality means... Well... Admits of... High. Like, I can look at those trees... Look at all the differences. But in mathematics, I'm going to ignore the differences and True. just count them. True. Or give a size and shape and form, right? Sure. Which will use empty terms. Oh, okay. Interesting. Use of empty. Call them empty. He, he want what? Well, I just wondered why you were calling them empty. Well, because they have no specific content in nature. Oh, I see. Right. right. Like he said in geometry, he said, isn't it curious that the whole damn system is just straight lines and curves? I said, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I said, has anyone on and said, you have to know the language in order to do these propositions and each proposition, right, to make statements about it. They're all empty, but you come to a magnificent conclusion have a great about day. all kinds of conclusions you can make about straight lines and curves. Hmm. Yes, that's true. Right? Beautiful set of conclusions. Yeah. Speaking, you're having a grand old time. Lines. Yes. But the fun thing was, I said, so what? And Jeff said, well, you, you know anything about analogies? Mm. I said, a little bit. No bet. He said, <laughs> he said no, analogies use three different kinds of terms. Maybe four. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Numbers, mm -hmm. symbols, mm -hmm. ideas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And rhymes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it too has its own language. 
-hmm. and has its rules. Mm -hmm. And an analogy, therefore, can go either with mathematical terms, then it becomes homogeneous, or it can use physical terms in our everyday world, and that's heterogeneous, different terms, different... Yes, modes. okay. So therefore, it looks like analogy is the parent that can use both systems, heterogeneous uh -huh. and homogeneous terms. Mm. Huh. Okay. Nice. So that he's smart ass. I shouldn't say that. I'm glad he's not here. But he said, uh, yeah, he said, uh, should not then that system of analogies can apply to either homogeneous terms or heterogeneous terms be capable of being a model for all models? That is huh. Mm. I bet it did. Yeah. And Jed was sitting in the background and he was, it astonished him too. Wow. So I said, wait a minute. That was, that was a, a, fat, a, a large step. He just yes, that's see? Yeah. see? That's very, why very I was somewhat astonished and yeah. so, was, so was Jed. Huh. So I said, <clears throat> well, what kind of subject would be appropriate for a model of all models? Mm -hmm. And would it be any value to master it? And in what sense would you be changed if it had a value? Mm. Then he parked the car and he said, I gotta run. Mm. Damn. <laughs> so I didn't get the rest of what he was doing. But you can finish it now. No, no, it's him. He, that's, <laughs> that's why I said when he left, I said, I hope he's gonna go someplace to get answers. So, I'm sorry, I missed the last question about how it was related to value? Well, it has to be some value to it all. I mean, there got to be some purpose. Ah, we wouldn't it. want it to be empty, even though it's inclusive. Yeah. yeah, mm. yeah. It's interesting that a model that is relationships, right? It's a model of relationships. Yeah. Mm. Terms and relations. Yeah. Well, except that... that since you have so many kinds of terms. Well, heterogeneous and homogeneous relationships and terms. Uh, is, it, is it the heterogeneity of it which makes it apply to what we call reality, whereas the homogeneity of it keeps it within a closed system, uh, in its own system? Yeah, but each of them can be their own system separate from the other. Right. But 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 you were pointing out. Hello. Yeah, we're talking today. Well, good news. Well, find some people to share it with. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> you gonna turn down good news? No, I know it's so, good news. Go ahead. Huh. Um, <laughs> that that <laughs> threw me off. I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, well, you were asking. We're all seated. Got interrupted. You were asking whether it was the heterogeneity and no. yeah. Well, no, no. The, the giant step he took. Whereas uh, analogy could be a model for models because it has heterogeneous and homogeneous terms. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to see how that fit into the former discussion about the various systems and ideas mm -hmm. having a limit to their applicability, um, like, like, um, like number or to physics or anything has a limit to. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if the heterogeneous quality allows for a transition to something that's more applicable to um, the world. Yeah. See, see what that's was a lot. It was a small point. Mm -hmm. Behind this, he had this other question which bugged me that he got off of that goodness. What was that? And he was raising the point that for all of this to be, to be said, to be true, then that must be curious that these empty systems, homogeneous terms, when applied to reality, fit, like in physics. Like, Why does well, that have to be the case? Well, would you agree physics deals with a whole bunch of things called equations? They're yep. all empty? Yep. And when, but when they apply to reality, they can anticipate and understand certain <coughs> things going on in reality. True. Like... So he was asking me, how do I explain that? Motion. How do you justify it? I mean, how is, why is that so? Why should there be such a 
correspondence. Mm. See, so that was lingering behind all of this discussion. Mm. Because how is it that something we make up, mathematics we make up, it's our own creation. And how come it can apply to what we call subatomic world, a world we, <laughs> we can't even see? But it applies with great accuracy mm. and it unfolds even deep, deeper levels of reality, doesn't it? Um, a, a kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A kind of reality. Yes, yeah. yeah. Some divine mechanism is at play here. <laughs> yeah, well, he was holding to the principle that there must be some parallel between the two, mm -hmm. and that's a correspondence theory of reality, he said. Parallel between heterogeneous and homogeneous, or between the term, mathematical terms and that to which they apply, like physics yes. applying to the latter. second. Mm -hmm. okay. But it could equally apply to the other if you think about it. Mm. <laughs> well, well, then they're not okay. empty terms. Sir? Then they are not empty... Um, but they are. Would you agree this curious equation, which everybody knows, e equals mc squared? Mm -hmm. What is e? That's a symbol, a letter. But, uh, but agree? I agree. Equal, a rather curious word. Mm -hmm. Right? You ever found it in nature? No, but it... Uh, no, have, you ever, have you ever found anything truly equal to another thing in nature? No. So therefore it's an artificial germ. It doesn't even apply to nature. But uh, How about uh, light squared? But it does apply to nature. But wait a minute, what do, please, what do you think about light squared as an idea? It's a little bit overkill. <laughs> uh, light's fast enough. Why do they have to square it? What, what the hell does it mean to square it. light, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can square a number, 2 is to 4, right? But 3 is to 9, you can square it. But what happens if someone comes along and says, you know what, you can square a light? So when he, Jeff said this, uh, I, you know, I laughed at him because I, you know, I don't believe you can do that, but he, he's into this number stuff mm. and he thinks that made sense. But I said those are empty terms because you can't find those in nature, can you? E? Can you find E? No, but. Can you find it equal to two other letters? No, but. And one of them is light squared? No, but th those words point to something in nature. Oh, you mean it applies to something different than itself? Oh, yes. Oh, but in itself they're empty of any application. You have to apply it. Right. You oh. have to... Well, then the terms are empty, yet when you apply it to something, you're giving it qualities which it never had to begin with. Okay. <laughs> Is that right? That's true, but why are we even talking about the terms? <laughs> Because he's going somewhere, right? Because someone asked me about what Jeff, yeah, he walked away, he, he's going to go to a place where he can get some answers to continue this discussion, oh. which I hope he'd come and come back with. I hope he brings some useful But But terms. do you think they're, see, we ended with that curious point, that if analogies include both homogeneous and heterogeneous terms and can be used within these different kinds of systems appropriate to each, mm -hmm. Is it possible that it might be able to generate a model, not of any particular system, but a model of all models? Something like the Parmenides? I don't know the word. What is it? Parmenides. Huh. Let me do that again. Huh. Hmm. <laughs> might have some parallels. Might. There is a lot of analogy in the Parmenides. Mm -hmm. And someone, I don't remember who, hey, you know, voiced the idea, each hypothesis. That's it. Hey, if we can figure it out before he comes, we can have fun with him. <laughs> right? We won't appear as ignorant as I was in this discussion. Hmm. Well, it's going to take him two hours to get back, I think. So but he's, he's, Two hours plus. I don't believe that he's really going to go to this place to get answers and it's going to take him a couple of hours to get the answers where he's going. Yeah. That's just a phony excuse he has. Really? Yeah, he's not going anywhere. He's going to go to the ICU. <laughs> right? Emergency. 
That's a great center of learning, is it not? Intense. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. Intense? They have no buildings? Intense. What kind of a nomadic group is this? So what do you think about this? Can there be a model of all models? I don't think it was when I was there. Models. It seems like there there has to be. There has to be? It seems like. If it must be, why must Hmm. it be? I'm willing to go along with you, since I'm known as Pierre the Agreeable. Well, otherwise, it's all random. Otherwise, it's... Uh, Fast. 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 Need something in between that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, it, it, we we would if we want to say that the reality is intelligible, then we we would need it to be rational. Um, yeah. And or find some system which show its rationality. Yes. That. Mm. And if the if if reality is rational, then um, you, we should be able to find a system which corresponds to that rationality. Mm. Better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like that's that. helpful. Yes. <laughs> and that might in fact yeah. be the model of all models. But wouldn't we yep. want to know why we're using the word model at all here? Because models, doesn't that suggest, well, hmm, what is it a model of? <laughs> that's my question. So oh. That's what I asked him. What is it? Uh, Right. What well, will be its subject? Is the subject. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, okay. what what would be its subject? Isn't that what, what we we've been saying? It's the model of all models for yeah. all levels of reality, right? Or, or, or are we just saying? And all games. And all games. Right. And all human things that can be understood within systems. So it must be a system of all systems. Hmm. So inherent in all the models is this model, which is the model of all models. Well, you would have to show now why inherent in all of the models is that model of all models. Yeah, you'd have yeah. Well, in math, you could show analogy being there. Did that answer? It's a good point, but did you... Well, that would be one place. That would include physics. That would include what you said, EMC squared. E, uh, e equals MC squared. Um, that that would be applic- have an, an analogical relationship because it would have to be applied to nature. So there is in each of the examples you gave, there was an analogical base to it. But to answer your question fully, I have it. My question, you were going to show why inherent in all systems is the model of all models, was the issue. Oh, okay, so if... You want if, to keep that on mind. Okay, right. if analogy is inherent in all of those models that have a limitation, then we could say that that would be a model that's common through all of those. That would be an element, whether that would be a model. Oh, okay. Hmm. Or you could say it could be reduced to analogies. Okay. Could you say all but the that local? Would not be, that would not be the same as saying inherent in all of those systems is the model of all models, which is the point we were discussing. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I was just wondering whether whether are, are we because we use the word language initially, are we saying the language of mathematics, the language of right, and the people who bring excellence into that? use of language to describe okay so are we really talking about analogy uh, so the content of analogy is logos or that is both content and structure again kind of a jump no 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 but see now you're moving to whether or not you really? 
include the idea of the logos, mm. as it's playing some major role in this idea of the model of all models. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. I was asking. Right. And that would be worth showing. Right. Yes. Right. That would be another okay. thing you'd want to connect, wouldn't it? Okay. And can we ask about what the cause of the model is okay. at some point? Later. The cause of the model That's of a big model. jump. Mm. Well, as we were talking point, in the car, and he was holding forth and pointing out that all of these systems are models, and some are more inclusive than others. Mm -hmm. And since you brought up the idea of inclusive, obviously the next question would be, could there be one that includes oh, all of them, or a model of all models? Yes, yes, yes. And see, while we were driving uh, along, getting past Brookhurst, he raised the question of whether or not there are some systems that are more sophisticated than other systems in their ability to correspond to the subject of their, of their object. Cool. And unfortunately, he raised the issue of, of psychology. Unfortunately. <laughs> My God. And, and he said, you know, one of the problems with psychology is that they, they don't have a sophisticated model sufficiently to deal with their subject. Mm. And that's the problem of interpretation, which happens to be Regina's question that she's dealing with. Mm. Interpretation. Really? Right. So, Jeff was saying that, that uh, psychology is a system of interpretation. Mm. And what system must include systems of interpretation? That got us stuck while we were pulling up on the hill on Victoria. Mm. And, uh, So some, well, mm -hmm. some beautiful girl drove a ride by with a bicycle and we lost our point for a while until we had to recover it. That happens. Yeah, yeah. Turned out she was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, but that was an interesting point, isn't it? Like, there are systems, some are more sophisticated than others, and mm. have terms which are more directly applicable to their subject. Mm -hmm. And therefore, among them, mm, right, they have different degrees of precision and application and, and ability to bring about a certain value and an exercise of excellence within each varies accordingly. Is it always the case? Hmm. That, that last point. I was going to ask about interpretation. Is all interpretation, by virtue of its distance from representing reality accurately by nature, a pathologos? That's one of the issues we could have raised, but he had to go out. He ducked away to get some more answers. Um. But uh, stay on that. That's a good one, you see. Because what, what is an interpretation? Mm. Right? Is that not the application of one system's problems in terms of an entirely different system? Could be said, mm. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And insisting that that, that way of understanding an object, not in its own terms, but in an alternate system, admits of various degrees of accuracy. Yep. Absolutely. Or inaccuracy. Yeah, that's right. It's only going <laughs> to yeah. fit in certain ways in certain areas yeah. and not in others. Yeah. It won't be able to grasp the whole of the material. Yeah. Well, he said he had some experience in chemistry, I don't know. I didn't know that, but he said that uh, that's one place where they don't allow interpretation mm -hmm. in because, chemistry. Because it might blow up on them. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> might blow up the. Yeah. <laughs> might blow, yeah. 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 Consequences are more. Yeah. Well, they keep throwing out stuff that they assume aren't needed. Is needed. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, the gentleman left. Oh. Just when it was getting good. Yeah, getting good. Hmm. But Gina might have something to add on that since Go ahead. interpretation yeah, yeah. is her yeah. direction yeah. at the moment. Huh? I don't know if that's yeah. the right word. Uh, in terms of the conversation, I thought Pierre covered it very well. Yeah, well. That it was limiting the. Um, knowledge or gaining which, understanding of the object that you're interpreting on. Yeah, like which system in psychology very clearly as a part of its very 
uh, functioning relies upon a different system than, than itself to understand its subjects. Well, doesn't dr Jungian dream interpretation? Yeah, clearly. Clearly. Freud. Freud. Uh, behavior. Behaviorism. Oh. All of those do what? Then implies something other than itself. Other than itself. Other than itself? Uh, well, when you apply mythology to dreams, aren't you applying a system that is different from the subject dream? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. It's different than itself. Yeah. 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 I see when you say other yeah. than itself. Yeah. Yes. And, okay. it, and they may, and depending upon what system, some of them may apply them much more accurately than others. Yes. Uh, Interesting. I'd like to know which one is more accurate? Well, like, I, mean, I, I know that, that uh, <laughs> Europeans are more akin to mythology, mm. that kind of mythology that Jung uses, ah. because their culture is still alive mm. with those images. I ah, gotcha. But it's difficult to find those same images in Southern California. <laughs> so such That's true. In Southern California, who go into doing the analysis, they're going to be using a European system that is common to Europeans mm -hmm. and apply it to the psyche where the psyche doesn't have that kind of material upon which to draw off for yeah. interpretation and understanding. So you're saying even if, if you go to Europe, that system would be more applicable? Yeah. Really? Well, because it's alive with images, isn't it? Every place you go has yeah. its own history. Um, has its own language, has its own roots, has its you own symbols You kind of have to go back to the 16th streets. century to start understanding what they're doing today. Mm. Yeah. It's all historical or, or even more artificial than that. Well, mm. Like I knew, maybe you, you probably don't believe this, but I knew maybe 10 people or so who attended Jungian clinics in Southern California, and none of them ever had a, a Jungian-type dream analysis. That hmm. worked because worked. they didn't have the corresponding images in their psyche. But he thought they were universal. Hmm. Europeans always do that. They think what they they've got is European. Central. The only problem with this world is white people, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> they fuck, the white people have fucked up everything. Sorry, or white you can people. take that off the table. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody behind the fence was laughing. You know, I figured out the problem with those white people. They lack melanin. Oh. <laughs> they are thin-skinned. I heard that. The darker your skin, the greater the spectrum of melanin you have. So I figured they're just the all thin-skinned. The less you're inclined to want to conquest and destroy other psyches, I think. I don't know about that part. But, but I'm so uh, sorry about the joke. But, uh, no, I like the joke. Although, I suspect it's only because our view of history isn't going back far enough. Because of all the wars and all the conquests and all the influence. Like in India, right? You have that those levels of influence, levels of yes. domination. and But but certainly for the last period of time, it has been the white guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not the white women, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well. <laughs> Those whites, you know, they brought in the railroad into, into India. Really? And what did that do? Well, it changed the whole country. See, when Gandhi gained his fame in southern uh, Africa, he was a lawyer, hmm. right, educated in England. He never knew India. He, he spent his life up to this point in South Africa. Hmm. So therefore, when he gained fame, he decided to go to his fatherland, back to India. Now he had to try to understand the country he never lived in. Mm. Oh. You know what he did? Took a train ride. Oh. Wow. Oh. And that let him get a grasp of the whole picture. Well, then yeah. he, he traveled with people and natives to the culture. Yeah. He saw it. Right. The he problems, the plus, the pros, the cons, the differences. He talked to people. He decided to dress like them. Hmm. And he began, therefore, he became happily an Indian again. All right. See, look, see, really? Look, he was just yeah. like Rama of the jungle. Yeah. 
So did he, um, Who's the was, he uh, was he able to actually, um, like in his educational system, so to speak, in his paideia, did he become Indian? Or what, had he never left with? Did it surface? Well, you see, he, you see it's the same problem with our, uh, Sri Aurobindo. Uh, mm. They are educated in Europe. In that sense, they have a European culture. Mm -hmm. some, to some degree, in mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. In oh. both, their parents didn't want them mm. to learn their native culture. Mm. Yep, a lot of that goes on today. Right, right. Like yep, Sri yep. Aurobindo, great Hindu philosopher. He mm. never knew India. He spent his life in France. His mm. reputation is all in France. And so again, he wanted to join the natives and take a place there. The Take revolution back his heritage. against England. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think his being in France uh, caused him to be a little bitter against the English for any historical reason. No. I would never say that. No. Good. No. Good. True. <laughs> so he, that's a system. Mm. It's a state yeah. system. That's interesting. Being French is a system. Being yeah. English is a system. And it's, and it's grounded and so in their logo. Sri Aurobindo, you, yeah, he had to now learn an Indian philosophy. Mm. Wow. Okay. And so he got some books. Mm. He didn't go to native teachers. He uh, got the books. Damn, I was thinking he might go mm. travel around and visit all the gurus that are... No, he didn't have them. No? <laughs> no. Because he was educated in France, yeah, so he's a book learner. Right, he learned he learned the French way of thinking and applied it to Hindu scriptures and became famous. Hmm. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, that makes in sense. India or in, in France? He became famous in France? Yeah. 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 Are, we, are we still talking about Gandhi? No, yeah. Sri Aurobindo. Oh, okay. Yeah, when I was uh, at American Convocation State, Sri Aurobindo recommended a Hindu to, t to teach Hinduism in the United States at the academy. Oh, no. And I sat down with the dude, who was named Chaudhary, Haradas mm. Chaudhary. Oh. <laughs> because he went to English schools in India and got his PhD in English philosophy. Oh my God! You know, a goddamn thing. <laughs> so he picked a base, an introduction to Hindu philosophy as a textbook, and learned Hinduism. Uh -oh. As he was teaching it, and then went, "Oops!" Like <laughs> 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 he he knew the, the you know. Uh, and could speak eloquently about McTaggart. Oh my God. Oh, McTaggart, what great English philosophers no one reads. But, uh, <laughs> is but, he really great? Oh yeah, he is. He's a very fine thinker, but I don't ever want to read one. His McTaggart? McTaggart, McTaggart. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he was also, yeah, he was into... Uh, strong family. He's a copy of himself. Strong family name. <laughs> Star a very strong family name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Bart, and he was also, in, in, uh, to appearance in reality, yeah. hmm. and that was in the same tradition. He knew it was. What? Yeah, oh. Just like her been done oh my God. Mm. That's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> so but every, everybody went to hear his lectures on Hinduism. Because he sounded like a... And I go, I know that goddamn book. Mm. I got the book. <laughs> yeah, I don't need me. Yeah, yeah, you're not doing anything with this. You haven't taken it any further. So are we still speaking about interpretation, really? That's interpretation, mm -hmm. see? Applying on the background. See, they thought they were now becoming exactly what they dreamt they would be. Yes. Though their families deprived them of it themselves. Mm, you're sure. Like Reverend and his father had so if you're not going to learn anything about that great, crazy country, you have to be French. And he literally kept them away from natives. Because they thought being French, he thought being French was a step up, yeah. so to speak. Mm -hmm. He wanted to leave his own well, yeah, mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really want to get, to get, get to go ahead, <laughs> can you think of any easier way than to go to Oxford and Cambridge? <laughs> you want to get ahead. 
Oh, in at some time periods, even today, it's, yeah. it's kind of a yeah. step up. Yeah. Even you know, though it's, they're it's disparaged now, but yeah, I mean, there are just as many boring people in Oxford as there. Uh, are I think there are more <laughs> boring people. Maybe that's the well. I, I'd be interested in the North Korean guy, Kim. He went to Oxford. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. And there are pictures of yeah. them having fun walking up and down Fifth Avenue know. in New York City. Hmm. And I don't really know about what going yeah. to Oxford means. And I say that because we had a, a, an exchange student from China. Her whole I've forgotten why, but she got received like a, a complete scholarship to Claremont University mm -hmm. in philosophy. Okay, she couldn't communicate. You had no idea what she was saying. Her English was that bad, and she got her doctorate. Because, just really because she had been invited and given a scholarship. And they were sending her back with the scholarship and the PhD. And she, I was in seminars with her. And no, if, she, if <clears throat> she could not put together an intelligible sentence in English. So therefore, she, I'm, I can't imagine that her writing would be magically transformed into high philosophies, so to speak, mm. right? So therefore, they didn't care. You know, have, running up against that problem of this woman doesn't have enough English, they sent her on her merry way. I wonder if they did that with King Jong, whatever its face sure. is. Gave him the superiority complex that comes with being an Oxfordian without any content. Was there a you certain know? amount of money exchanged in this, uh, you think? Kindness. Oh, yeah. Kindness in this case. Hey. <laughs> Both of those. What was her dissertation yeah. topic? I don't, I don't recall that it was All ever mentioned. You could look her name About up their degree. Find us. If I could find her name, that would be yeah. another whole step. <laughs> or the year she graduated. Yeah. How many does that go around? How prevalent is that? People buying degrees out there. I'm sure you know, it's, it, prevalent? It, it, it's really common. Yeah. Were you giving the... Didn't we the, have Bush? Yeah, uh, the Bush. All the, all the, a lot of the kingpins bought their way in, right? Mm. And they'll say, oh, so-and-so gave $2 million to the school. And soon after that, his son was invited to be a member of the college, not by his... Ability. Bush. Bush. And I think Kushner. <laughs> Kushner Bush said too. it. Yeah, Kushner for he sure. He said, Bush said, I enjoyed getting my gentleman VC as I went through Harvard. <laughs> See? Gentleman VC, yeah. which means they gave him a pass because of his position, yeah. not because he mastered he anything. He's a cheerleader. Mm. And in fact, uh -oh. I've heard that in Japanese school, they, they, um, I knew that out. might happen. Not See, that's always a weird deal. Yeah, okay. What did you want, Pierre? We'll pick it up for you. <laughs> Some fruit. Fruit. And a toothpick. <laughs> Is the light still on, on that thing? What's in the box that you brought? These are cookies from last night. I know there's some cookies. No, no. Top of it. I don't know. Somebody brought them Oh, it's a Friday night. Gotcha. It might be on your shirt, Pierre. Yeah, I, was, I went to Las Vegas thing. for two days. I was so proud. Oh, oh yeah. Being oh. with my family. Oh, good. Yeah. Confined okay. to... Family logos. Oh, Lovely. Yeah. Did you get what you wanted? Well, I understood it all. But <laughs> we'll get it. Yeah. Just okay. go ahead and and saw okay, a lot. So probably. Let's put this, was it on your mostly wallet? a reflection at the time. They keep this light on. ongoing, yes. meaningless dialogue going yeah. on, yeah. filling yeah. every Good. single Thank crevice of every ball. moment. But it, 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 like this, repetition, 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 repetition of the same set of twenty details about a massage, for example. You'll hear it countless times before they actually manage to get their asses out and go, so you don't have to listen to it. I like didn't go. Paper. And, right, but I saw something about sure. my nephew yeah, marrying a woman who was like Which one do you want to a be? Di shining diamond example of yeah, my mother. I got it. I see Just it. In, in space. I'm good. Thank you. We're gone. I, go, I, I, don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm going to make it. Liam's wife is a diamond? No, no, no. Not Liam's. Uh, Wes's. Rose's really? son. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, but wow. She's yeah. very, very good at it. And she's very charming about good. it. But if you don't want to do it, boy, she doesn't like you. Yeah, which is what I, I did want a two hundred dollar massage for fifty minutes. It's like, <laughs> oh, I think I'll pass on that. Is that a dream? It's a daydream. Oh. Do we conclude on what was the model of all models that we should understand in terms of the relationship self in order to gain excellence in something that we define anything? Yes, you missed it though. Sorry. Sounds like, yeah. <laughs> we started with that. What is it? So let me ask you a question. Analogy. Huh. Here. <laughs> Just ask for the stuff, we'll get it for you. Uh, 
Can't you put that in this pocket? I have here. No, the speaker's here. Oh. I mean the microphone. I have a daydream. <laughs> right. How will, with what system shall we use to understand? <coughs> we'll apply the European mythological system. Good. Or should we? And then Fr Freud. And Freud. And Freud. Right? And, and behaviorism. behaviorism. Let's and throw in uh, Tarot, just to, you know. And whichever one you oh. like. <laughs> Let's use the logos that best deal we'll with do. dream content. We'll each, and we can do um, Rogers. <clears throat> we can nod our heads. Add in, in them. If there's a model of all models, is that model what we could use for dream analysis? It contains the whole models. And changing tires. Yeah. Like I, well, I think it on? always is. Always Pierre's is. system is always analogical. Analog analogy, metaphor, simile. That's what's the structure of his work. Yeah, it's, it's a curious subject. Analogy is actually four-dimensional movement in the three-dimensional space as represented in two dimensions. <laughs> okay. We've cool. seen that before, remember? Okay. The, the face being drawn to itself. Mm. But I don't, I, um, I would love I to see, see it. That. I, I just have, Go ahead. I'm sure you have. It's been, a, well, I don't remember it in detail. I didn't see it. Do you remember the, yeah. he drew the, the cube. The, and yeah, cube. and then draws the s symmetry of the face through mm -hmm. on the on the cube. I, I don't remember how he tied analogy into that. There's a dialogue yep. about it as well. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I was thinking that if you had a chart here, he might be able to draw a representation of his thought. I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I like the idea. If you didn't mind, I'd love to see it because I don't oh. have it. You know, mm -hmm. it's been a while since I saw it last. And okay, sure. The task was, <clears throat> let us see if we can get a daydream under one circumstance. He's involved in reading something significant, and if something comes in to bust it up, and we're calling Thank that you, a daydream. Agree? Yeah. Right, he was in the Mino, I presume? Yeah. Bang! In comes this. I imagine myself explaining something as everyone is listening using my hands as I'm making my point, displaying my knowledge, and people are thinking, oh, he's knowledgeable. <laughs> Boy, he's got a nice sense <laughs> Okay, what did that do to your reading? Oh, my it, emphasis. It, um, it was like I was reading, and then I was taken out of the reading. And as you read, and when you, did you then do something after this? Did you continue reading? I went back and then I had the second daydream. And then you got the second one when you went back. Which is pretty much the same. <coughs> right? Same. Daydream. What's important is that mm. it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Why is that important? Uh, because it's the sel same self-image. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. A, in a slightly different... Right. Right. Do we want to know... The second one? Yeah, Do we yeah. want to know how good his... or what his state of mind was? before it came up? Sure. And whether Please. he got back to that point? Yeah, it was very good. It was, it was the high point in the reading. Mm. Okay. And when you went back to it after the first daydream, were you, what, how did it compare, your state of mind after? Um, that's a bit hard. Okay. Maybe same or slightly diminished. Mm. Okay. I just wondered, because no, no, I was thinking my own sure. experience. Put it on yourself. Ah. No. We mm -hmm. want to know for our study. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it, we all have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we all have that question. Here's the second. A scene of me leading my my friend through an inquiring in the same way as Socrates does with me know. Then I'm in I'm I'm in my other friend's perspective thinking. Eldar is such a unique and intelligent guy. <laughs> right? Hey. Right? Yep. 
we could probably almost substitute my name in there. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're the, how about my name? Well, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's the same. Um, same, it's the same thing. See, now, it's either superfluous and of nothing of consequence, or it's something that may be to some degree important to see. I think it's important, right? Boy, I'd like to see mine too. It stinks of importance. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> By the way. Uh, <coughs> Is there anything in this daydream that is true? Uh, just asking you, you think what is being said is literally true? That that will happen and that does happen and that's the way in which you can become intelligent? Hmm. Um, you mean as a, as a standard for Intelligence? You mean like, is it a good standard? I just want to know whether this is true or not, mm. that's all. Could you read it again? Yeah, sure. number, the <clears throat> number one. I'm leading my friend through an inquiry in the same way as Socrates does with Mino. No, the, set, the first one. Then I'm in my other friend's perspective thinking, Eldar, he's such a unique and intelligent guy, the first one. I imagine myself explaining something using my hands as I'm making my point as everyone is listening and displaying my knowledge and people are thinking, oh, he's knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. what, what do you mean by that question? What, what do you mean by is it true? Well, he said, is there any part of it that's true, right? That's the same, same question. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like it's very true. What do you mean? That there's that there's nothing, for except perhaps the fantasy to keep you from mastering the dialogue, taking your friends through it, and given the level of what goes on in the world, you would in that way be a unique individual. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that as a goal you want to pursue philosophy, right? And you're going you're going you obviously think the series of steps here are universal enough to master? Wouldn't that be true? Uh, yeah, but it's it takes me out of the pursuit of mastering. Yeah, well, yeah, but that wasn't what the question was. The question was, is there anything that was true about the, in a way the content is what I took it? Yeah, well, let me or, restate it. Okay. okay. Say, would you agree you have something interesting going here? Um, I'm going to go to the second one. Would, would, it, would it be true that it's by reading the Mino that you would be able to lead your friend mm. through an inquiry, learning in the same way that Socrates does with Mino? Yes. Is that true? In other words, it's likely that people who read the Mino will end up like Socrates and having the ability to do this kind of dialectic. Uh, well, no, not they what? won't be. They won't be like completely like Socrates, but. Pardon me. Are you saying yes or no? Uh, no. Oh. Well, then this is false. Mm. I think also. Yeah. Right, because, right? Well, what would you have to do in order to function in the same way as Socrates? Hmm. I, I know. A lot Master the Mino. A lot more than... What? A lot more than mastering just one dialogue. There's more to Socrates than what appears to be on the Mino? Yeah. Good heavens, what a strange theory. Hmm. What, do you, what do you expect? In other words... According to this, right, mm. this ideal of becoming the same as Socrates, you would have to become Socrates. Right. Given everything that he does, you would have mastered it as the same way he has. Right. Right. 
You think you can get that way by mastering the man? No. <laughs> oh. But it raises that hope. Uh, right, it, it, there it, is a, a... It's kind of like a... It's like an ultimate fantasy. That the daydream is kind of like a like a fantasy that it's like um, it's as if I'm imagining uh, the ultimate goal and it's already been achieved yes quite true <coughs> that's true which is very uh, which stinks of my father mm. <laughs> <laughs> very nice and what way oh well that's just that's his most common spiel. It's like uh, I I can see him like in the kitchen, uh, standing with his chest puffed out and saying how he's gonna lose weight and gonna be so fit and handsome as he's eating <laughs> cake or something. Eating <laughs> <laughs> cake, that would do it. See. Um, <clears throat> what if we rephrase this Actually, uh, here, in terms of this? All right. <coughs> and my other friend's perspective would be: Eldar is going to follow the same fate as Socrates and be killed after a short while after delivering such talks. <coughs> Are you asking what difference does it make? What's the difference? Um. Your expectation is that people will recognize your greatness. Right. But in reality, what happened to Socrates? Did some people think he was nuts? It's the opposite, really. Did the majority think he was nuts? Yeah. Did they kill him for that nut being a nut? Yeah. So, that so if you're going to, hey, <laughs> does this daydream ignore the reality of Socrates' fate? Yeah. And only talks about a certain number of them certain number of people would think he's an intelligent guy. Yeah. And it's But certainly some might. Yes. And it's always um, that that daydream is always um, certain kinds of people think I'm great in my daydream. Yeah. It's yeah. a certain class of people yes, yes, that yes. are all the same. In the same class. But they don't think you're great. They think you're an intelligent guy. Mm. Does it follow that if people that are get the label intelligent guys are great? Or might you have to do something other than being intelligent to be great? That's true. It's 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 very focused on intelligent or knowledgeable. Oh, mm. oh! So then they would have to then recognize the difference between just intelligent and knowledgeable uh, in order to praise you for being what you are in the daydream. You mean? Uh, could you? Just Ask that again. We're just talking about the people who you are hopefully describing when you appear in a certain way. Unique and an intelligent guy. Yeah. Okay. Keep it up now. Is that the same judgment as that would be the way of becoming like Socrates? Becoming a unique and intelligent guy, or um, like mm. what? You mean in their eyes, or? No, I'm just wondering about your daydream. You I don't expect people, from their perspective, to see you as a unique and intelligent guy, right? Because, in terms of the other daydream, right? You're following the path of Socrates in the daydream. Yes. Yeah. By the way, with people who know 
Socrates philosophically think the guy is unique and intelligent or something else? Something more. Oh, oh, well then this is inaccurate. The uh, daydream is inaccurate. That's true. Yeah. It's giving you a, a rather curious hope. Are you, like, does your daydream think that by becoming intelligent you become like Socrates and therefore people would like you? Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a, um, a theme of shallowness to, to that, um, intelligence or, or This red. is a shallow view of what both knowledge and intelligent being is, or, or Yeah. Ah, oh, I see. Right, yeah. Therefore, it's not true. That's right, yeah. Oh, so you're being persuaded to engage in this, even though at the moment you think it's true. Mm -hmm. Right? You think it's true. Mm -hmm. Now we're reflecting on it and finding all kinds of weaknesses. Yeah, at the moment, when I'm in the daydream, it's not yeah, really it's in it. true. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, who, who do you know who would make those kinds of judgments? That that's great? That that's, in, that that's intelligence mm -hmm. and knowledge? <coughs> uh, do you know anyone who would be playing this game? Let me do it for you, okay? Who do you know who, when talking about something, explaining something, is using their hands in the way in which you described my dad. Really? Yeah. You had a dad? Some people do. Did you? Ah, uh, yeah. You two, you two have one. Oh. Well, what does that mean? Come on, now try it. In the daydream, you're imagining, you're using your hands by making your point. Is that similar to the way in which your papa makes a point waving his hands? If so, then it's picking up your past and putting it in your daydream, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, so, by the way, when he does that, does he think that people are going to consider him a knowledgeable guy? Yeah. Oh, well... He's and very animated and... What, what? He's very animated and... Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, then this daydream performing something about your past and drops it in when you're doing something different than what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it's like, I sh it's like it's saying I should be doing that. Yeah! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's competing. It's saying, be like him. The hell with reading. The hell with studying. <laughs> I'm not curious. Yeah. It's so shallow, though. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. The, the but it seems as real as he appeared when he was playing that game. Yeah. Hmm. And I can also... I, I, I'm very familiar with this daydream. I can um, also easily say that the people that are impressed by me in the daydream don't know what they're talking about, because they're impressed by so, li thing. so little. Same thing at home? <laughs> Does he play that game among people who know very little? Oh, yeah. Mm. I, I made a joke one time to my parents. Uh, I said to my dad, no, I said to my mom, you always pretend you're dumb and you always pretend you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? That cracked her up. That, that was, um, that was like, Five year, four years ago. Oh, that's Re great. Recently. That's good saying, right? She laughed, yes. and his reaction was not. He, he wasn't there, actually. Oh, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> now wait a minute. What are we doing, and can we put it in the discussion we just had about systems of understanding? Oh yeah. Well, if they they don't fit any system. We're not. 
they don't fit any known system. No, well, not, well you know, this, what it, this is, is this a system? Am well, I yeah. using some yeah. kind of a system? Yeah. yeah. So the system does exist. Yeah. And can't we say the pathologos is, lies in an analogical relationship to reality? as a bad copy, so to say. Could we say that? And therefore, as an interpretation, it's like a pale and, what, tangential, directs all your energy. You describe it as like a psychic vampire, because mm -hmm. it's sapping his energy to pursue the higher. Would you say? It's a very... It's, it's, uh, the path of Logos is a very spotty kind of Logos. When you apply the Logos to it, the integrity of the logos shows the, the inadequacy it. of the yeah, yeah. very nice. Path of logos. That's true. At, at first, it seems similar somehow right. to his goal, and right. then as you look closely at the character in the fantasy, and then the character of Socrates, so many differences started coming up right. that it it became it became antithetical to your goals. Right, and the method of achieving it was yeah. also, right, mm -hmm. a pale shadow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it has all the appearances of uh, logos. Mm. So now go back now. What kind of, is this a kind of system that we're applying to a mm. subject? Do you find it of value to mm. go through this? Yeah. Oh, well then we have something to say. At least mm. the system seems to produce a certain value in the subjects undergoing it. By the way, even those who are listening and not, and not directly participating in the same daydream, like, did you find this worthwhile? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this waste of time, isn't it? No. No? Well, well Barbara would agree with Oh, very worthwhile. Barbara wouldn't need it. The questions that you were asking, I was listening for myself as well. I, I feel, I feel no, kind wait of. Wait a minute. Is that rather peculiar? It was all three questions. That this system, right? Finish it. When applied equally, it can apply to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it must have some universal quality to it. Mm -hmm. True. Since we have different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Yes. So well, we're all participating in a similar logos. Especially when you use the word competition, yeah. that really, mm -hmm. that was like the mm. clincher for me. So yeah. I'm wondering, is that the spirit of it being a game? Is that the logo of a game? Well, one wins and one see, loses? every system is a game. With rules? Yeah. Physics is a game. Tennis is a game. Soccer is a game. But for playing. Chemistry mm -hmm. is a game. Yeah. If you mean by a game that there is a set of rules and an activity that follows from it, certain laws apply to it, certain values are associated with it, one can enter into it to certain degrees depending upon one's background. They're all games. In that sense, we're elevating the idea of games to include all systems and participants who want to get into it. In, in a way, it... Uh, it, I don't want to call what we're doing a system because it's like I don't know if it's because that word is kind of painted or um, okay watch model <laughs> <coughs> that's painted too a different model model How's that? That's better. Okay. That's better. Yeah, I, I, but I'm just trying to make the point that it's. Um, it's a it's a different um, class or tier of system than the other systems because mm. it's that's why it doesn't seem like a system to me because it's so close to um, reality. Your reality. Is it yeah. closer to your reality? Uh. Is this model we are using to explore your daydream? Does it apply to you, particularly? Yes. Personally? Yet it seems to have a universal impact for those who are participating and listening to it mm -hmm. and following it along step by step. Mm -hmm. Then it's wider, it's wider than mathematics. Sure. 
wider. So some has more applications. But a more general application to all the population. That was way yeah, I was taking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mathematics, it's true for only mathematicians. Any discussion of mathematics can be appreciated to various degrees by other people to the degree to which they have a corresponding background and degree okay. of excellence in it. Mm, that way. But this yes. seems to cut through everyone's background. Well, this is a system of logos turning upon logos. And to the degree that anyone participates in the logos, this could be applied. But if you had someone who couldn't, who was dumb, <laughs> or who couldn't talk, or didn't know language, this system would not be useful. Yeah. yeah. Could we also say so that it's anagogic? Yeah. Or can plants? we say it's also anagogic? That yeah. it can reach higher levels yeah. of existence as participation? And it returns the person to their higher state, That's and so shows them in the shortfalls how to set how to achieve those higher states and higher yet I would think mm -hmm. for everybody because it's purification mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking maybe yeah. that's the difference between uh, I'll leave out the, the I'm thinking, thinking part <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's there you see my path of logos <laughs> maybe that's the uh, that's the difference between logos and path logos is that it's anagogic mm -hmm. I see mm. I was seeing it in the system or in the model, but you're seeing it oh, oh. in terms of contraries. Yeah. Oh, in terms of contraries. Hmm. Or opposites, depending or opposite. on how you use language. Yeah. But, uh, you mean the way I expressed it? Well, we're just talking about this daydream and, uh, <coughs> See the distant question, which is still on our minds, is under what under what conditions can we describe that as coming close to resembling a model of all models? Because Jeff left when he, he was about did. to disclose his, his understanding Where did he of this. Go? And oh. he left Jed and I in a quandary. Left, you know, he brought us to this kid. dialogue and he left us without any answer. Under what condition? C could you uh, what? could you ask that question again? He left us with the issue: Is there such I a know. thing as a model of all models, and what is could possibly be a subject, and would it have any personal value to anybody learning it, and mastering it, and showing an excellence in it? And and oh, I thought it was also: Is it a model of all models for? Can it be shown that it's a model for all <coughs> models for all for everything? Uh, like, it's a model for any mathematician could improve in excellence in his field by applying that model, right? So it applies to all fields, and it applies to all people. Or so we all have struggles in trying to achieve excellence, excellence in any system or model. Yeah, and all people personally, yeah, and, all and people. which no, no. is a subcategory. Uh -huh. So that's another... You we're getting another closer... Word. How could it be shown that it was a model for, of all models, right? Or yeah, that's like the issue. That. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, another word. Yeah. If it's a model that allows for excellence within other models, then it's a model of all models. A model of how to attain excellence in all models. So what we're saying? Mm. That's what we said. Well, are you suggesting degrees of excellence can be arranged hierarchically? Mm. Mm. And among that hierarchy you place this kind of thinking way up on top? Yes. Is that because you like it? No. Oh, it's because you're familiar with it? No. no. That's not a lot of it. No. Well, 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 I wish I were. It's so hot. <laughs> it's because we see it work for ourselves, it's even if someone else is the subject. Mm. It's capable of usia. It's anagogic. Yes, see, it plays a role in it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Getting people to reflect upon their grief, their answers and rules upon it and turn it upon themselves. Very much so. I mean, that in his own fantasy or daydream, he was not 
Usain the content of <laughs> what he was fantasizing Usain about. Usain. <laughs> and it required, and in the discussion, it allowed him to reflect on that. Yeah. So it certainly is curious. But we were, get, we were in a better shape when he returns, you know. Yeah. 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 But he may make fun of us when we offer it. Yeah. Can we offer all our fantasies now on Friday night? Is that we can start doing that? That'll be scary. I don't you, know if you we know, should do that. I wonder what Juliana's little fantasy. You know, um, it, is this um, turning into a fantasy? Because sometimes that daydream um, goes a little bit further and. Uh, it goes into me um, formulating what would be the best thing to say within the daydream. What would be the best thing to say to those people? Um, does that is that mm. then moving into like a fantasy, or is that still a tangent? I guess mm. it depends on what I'm doing at the moment. Well, you're asking whether if you might change some of the conditions of your fantasy, whether it could be equally a significant, right? Sometimes it, it has that quality of like I'm I'm trying to shape and build the daydream. Mm -hmm. I'm like spinning it in different ways. No. You don't want to shape the daydream. It's mm -hmm. pure. Mm -hmm. No, I, I know. I'm just saying. Now watch. Um, why did you, I like your question? That was a good question. Why did I think it was pure? Oh, did he ask that or did I? You, you did. Oh. I believe. Oh, 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 do I not? But he'll appreciate answering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And you know, I realized I didn't actually ever remember seeing you tie that uh, three dimension three-dimensionality, the f requirement of the fourth dimensionality for symmetry. I don't recall your t connecting that with analogy. So that would be something I'd love to see. So okay. if you're going to do a seminar on that subject, yeah. I am so into it. <laughs> right? That'd be but fun. Going back to this. Um, yeah. Um, see, a daydream is pure. Mm -hmm. hmm. In that sense, it it presents mm. you with the pathologos mm. that you had accepted as real and to that degree so long as it's influencing you you'll be limited by that fantasy it has its own goal mm. and, ah. and that that determines therefore the limit of your own seeking because once you get that then that's where you want it to be and that's the end of it that's what a fantasy does. What is a fantasy? Fantasy is, is a model for an imitation of behavior and of your future behavior. That's why they're important. Would you agree? If you want to know people's be habitual behavior, just ask them about their daydreams. That's the model they use, and that's why their behaviors be habitual, and that's why they continually do the same damn things over and over again, because daydreams are the uh, object of reflection. And they imitate, therefore, they act out their daydreams, and that's the problem with life. Bummers. Yeah. Right? That's all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think Bummers. Eldar, I, I think maybe Eldar, is he, are you asking that, that daydream that interrupts your high state, I, and then the other daydream, I don't know if I should even call it a daydream, where he's thinking about what would his friend see him as a, intelligent person or a, what is the other word, smart? Unique. 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 Isn't that a different, like, plan? It's not like an interruption daydream. Was it tangent? Hmm. It's all one daydream. It's like me it's kind of talking of and then... Or just fold it back. It, it just moves. It moves into the perspective of my friend. It kind of morphs into that a little bit. It's part of the, the drama. It, it, and then I'm in his eyes, I'm like looking from his perspective at me. Um, okay, I, I was just thinking like, like if you're daydreaming, like if you're planning to say meet your friend later on, 
and then you're going to be talking about, say, philosophy with them, then you're going to wonder what they're going to ask you, and then you're anticipating some of the questions, and then you start to wonder how, how they see you, and anticipating the question is, I guess I'm thinking of planning your interaction with them. But that's like a plan. Yeah, that's, if, that's what I was... Um, if, this, then if this happens, then what do I do kind of planning? So, I don't think that's... It has that element, actually. Yeah. Um, is, is, is that part of the daydream, though, shaping the daydream? Well, that's, that's my question. It, because it, it turns, it become, becomes something else. Mm -hmm. Because um, it's, the daydream happens kind of by itself, as daydreams do. Mm -hmm. But then, um, very smoothly, it moves into my kind of deliberating and question, kind of playing with what would be the best way to mm -hmm. say something in the... And it's connected. Mm -hmm. So I, And then usually I realize, I'm like, what am I doing? Like, and I kind of wake up out of it, like, this is, this is nonsense, this is just part of the daydream. Because I kind of take it on as a task. I'm like yeah. really trying to figure out um, <laughs> like the best response or the best... Um, yeah, the best response. I think that's tied actually to another daydream. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it turns into that kind of um, deliberation, which appears to be some kind of like uh, noble thing to do, like shaping... Uh, mm -hmm. A response, but then it. Um, I realize this is nonsense because it's based upon trying to impress them more. How, how does that relate to if you had a past scene in which you saw your father doing that? What What's the next step in in that past scene where you have to react to your father doing that? Is there yeah. any similarity? Are you Are you Are you? Is it just the next step in your deliberative? Uh, that's basically what I'm asking. How does that tie into the past scene, that kind of thinking, or that kind of machination? Like, how do you make what your father's saying true? I'm, I'm wondering if it... I haven't... Uh, I've been playing with the idea that it's tied to that um, event I explored of the loose chicks, mm -hmm. where I had to... where I was, like, questioned about it explain myself, explain your actions, what mm -hmm. have you done, mm -hmm. how could you do this? I think it may be tied to that. Because it's like... It's like in, in fear of um, re retribution. <coughs> in fear of... Um, how do you defend your daydream? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Or maybe it's... How do I defend what just happened before the daydream because I'm into something, right? Into, I don't know, playing the piano and then I get this daydream of my neighbor um, questioning me and then I'm explaining to him like I'm coming up with a good response to his complaint that I'm too noisy I'm coming up with this uh, grand response that's really rooted in justice of why I'm allowed to now and it's not that loud. A fantasy is we're talking about it. It's I think it's it's just a different daydream I'm realizing now. Um, it may not be connected well directly connected to this daydream. Well you had a particular state of mind before that fantasy. You said was good. It was a good state. Uh, the one I'm describing now, or what we did earlier? No, in the Mino, when you were reading the Mino. Yeah, it was a good state, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the square Mino now, won't you? It looks like the, the fantasy interprets that state talk about interpretation and it's false it's always a false mm. interpretation or it's interpretive 
Yeah, that's, that's one way of, of looking at it. I think that's... Like a counterattack. It certainly kind of like morphs it and uses it in a perverse kind of way. In a false way. Yeah. It's like... I'm doing something that's actually... Yeah, it's like I'm doing... Um, I'm on a meaningful pursuit and I'm in a great state of mind. And then my daydream is like, oh yeah, this is great. You can use this to impress some idiot. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I was doing Makes it into else, yeah. okay. Go ahead, it's okay. something much less uh, than <coughs> So yeah, in that sense, it's interpreting. Ah, I'm doing two things at once. Okay, I've got to stop. Or interpreting. It's not even in misinterpreting. Right, interpreting. I'm, I'm thinking that interpretation misses the... M messed up in any way. It's kind of, it's very leechy in that sense. Leechy. <laughs> oh, it, it leeches the energy and tries to turn it into some, mm. something, it's creepy. Shallow, like something shallow. Uh, Pierre, yeah. Pierre calls it a psychic parasite. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. That's Creepy, perfect. Yeah. It's just that's perfect. It takes it, it takes yeah. the energy that you have and bleeds it feeds it itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna listen to the, but the questions he was asking you allowed you to reflect on the content and how you understood it for yourself, and that's. Very like that's not interpreting what your what the content of it is. That's seeing what the content really is. Well, it's not even it's allow it's question it's questioning or asking questions to you to reflect on um, the meaning, the logos, the really reality. Put it into light. What, what really is going on? Yeah, the reality of it. Did, nice. did you, so after this fantasy, did you stop studying? How did it affect you? Um, no, I kept going for a while. But I, I laid down uh, and kept continued reading. I really had a strong urge to lay down for some reason. Mm, that yeah. could be that's, another fantasy. That's, that's Your connected. energy was sapped. Yeah. That's connected. That's yeah, the yeah. language you said. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's a, yeah, I did feel like I was very... Um, I felt tired all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I wonder if um, I can relate. <laughs> because mm. the pathologer's image doesn't have an inherent radiance of light behind it. Maybe the pathologos, as a parasite, needs to steal the psychic energy to provide that energy source for the maintenance of the image of that pathologos model. It's By like using model. using it on all of us, and it gets stronger as it sounds like the matrix. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like <laughs> <matrix. laughs> the matrix. It gets stronger the more energy it has from us. Yeah, yeah. from each of us. It's like just, the blob. We're just batteries. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> uh oh. We need an antidote. A psychic antidote. <laughs> <laughs> oh you man, the it's a good sci-fi. <laughs> it's a movie. The, okay. good, the cool thing is we are seeing it. Right. I think. And is that the psychic antidote? It's a what? The the model through which we like to see it is that the psychic antidote. Hmm. Oh, uh, yes. And how would we describe? My that? fantasies aren't like. Sorry, how would we describe that model? Oh, we have, we have to build a structure to to counteract it somehow. Then get a goal. Because Jay said it's a type of logos, and it's the logos of or the model of all models. It's worth understanding all the terms and the relationships so you can master it. And I can. And I gather it's part of different degrees of those pathologues, but each of us are different, of course. He is in a different dimension, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Let's go there. <laughs>
<laughs> is it the specifics of that I have loads of different what you're saying? I, I think so, is it? But there would be a model that it could apply to all people. Think, don't you think that would benefit us to have yeah. a separate shot of it? I mean, we'll have a oh, yeah. video shot of it, but okay, yeah. don't you think? Yes. He he's been taking pictures of the different charts and sending oh, he, them to Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you have the, well, if you could send it to me, too, that'd be very swell. You have, the, have the what? You have the dialogue that this is in? Uh, it was, that's, well, where I, that's where I read this. Okay. Uh, probably, but I right now it doesn't. Which one? Yeah, which, cool. Do you know the name of it? I think it might be the Buddhism and Madhya. Madhyamika. Yeah. Madhyamika Buddhism. Buddhism. That one or Madhyamika Buddhism and Hellenism and Madhyamika Buddhism yeah. or something. Yeah. It's either that one or another one. Which. Um, I remember reading that what he what he laid on us earlier and just being like, whoa. The statement about Yeah. Okay. Yes. Being a would you agree? Okay, talk it through? Yeah, would you agree? This is our model of four term analogy and four term <coughs> Oh, isn't that a it's a four term analogy but it's a mean analogy. I mean analogy, three term right? analogy. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me, three term analogy, right? Mean yeah, analogy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you push this through, into through it. itself in mm -hmm. each of these ways, mm. what do you notice about it? Mm. Well, would, if this one was pushed through itself, wouldn't this be A, B, B, C? Well, wait a minute. Okay, I'm well, just wondering. It, it depends on which way you want to go. Because okay. this one goes... This should, uh, if you go this way... Uh, Oh, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. A, B, B, C, right. Okay. And this B, A, C, B, right. Yeah, right. okay. Right. What do you notice there for? Hmm. Uh, same way here. Uh, mm hmm C, B, right? Yes. B, A, B, A, yeah. A yes, yeah. yes. What do you notice about them? Hmm. I don't know what to say about that. That's very interesting. A lot of okay. symmetry. Yeah, oh. what else? They that reverse, order. they reverse their order. Mm -hmm. and, and all they, of them, they their order. is the same thing in all of these four? Yes. Yeah. Is, is this an A or B, or, or an A or C? Well, or is that an it a should be C? C, B, B, A, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reverses it, their order. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, <clears throat> to have a cube, we need a top and a bottom. Yeah, right. That, that would be cool. And that would be doable. And that's doable, right? Because mm -hmm. you can then see it, okay? On the other hand, uh, hmm, when these two sides become... Does that still work? Yeah, I think it does. Well, I mean, yeah, does. when you pull the top up and then yeah. these become the sides, then they have... Yeah. They should be... Yeah, that's yeah, very cool. Yeah, then you need a top and a bottom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But right. the a bottom, at least. I think you have side sides. Side. In other words, we can represent an analogy in terms of a cube. Yes. Isn't missing one but you can have right. But yeah, yeah have that's why he says add. Add. What? The back side would be like add this side, bottom and top. Oh, but actually, right? he means only add. He has five uh, sides of six. Side he only know. needs one. Well, if you have More. a cube. Yeah. No, see. Oh, okay. You, you need. You need. Yeah. A, you need two other sides. I think you only need right. one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Oh, okay. Right? So this is the top. Julie. Then, uh -huh. right, okay. how you see okay. it. Well, then the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now, how do you move from a three dimension to a four dimensional figure? Uh huh. Right? Mm. Okay. And the rule is that if you have a one dimension, mm. then any motion continuing along itself. Mm hmm. You have one dimension. In a direction not contained in itself, not which is the point you make here. A straight line moving in a direction not contained in itself is going to produce a... Plane. Plane, right? Yeah. Sorry. I get excited. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Would you agree a plane... A plane That's the second dimension. Moving in a direction not contained in itself will produce a... Solid. Uh, it's cute. Cute. Yeah. Right. A fourth dimension is going to have to move in a direction not contained in itself. In itself, right. Right? Oh, we're going to do that. All right. Therefore, what might that be? Turn so upside out. if you take a cube and tra pull it through itself like a glove mm -hmm. pulled the out of itself. Yeah. Right? That would be an impossible movement for a three-dimensional object. Absolutely. Why? Because this would be one, mm. two, three, four. But by pulling it through, you'd have two, four, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. not in the same surface. It would be, see, right. to be pulling it back, pulling it through itself. The inside of this would be the outside, and the right. And they, but they would share the same line here. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So a three-dimensional object moving in a four-dimensional space is pulling itself through itself, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and being in a position that you cannot possibly move this object into in a three-dimensional world. Gotcha. Right, because yeah. if you move this object. It'll always be in front of this plane and never parallel along the same horizontal lines, right? Well, if that's true for cubes, if you put analogies in a cube, mm -hmm. are we not pulling it through itself? We are, but that, then we're not really think of, thinking of it as one single cube, right? But rather creating dimension? Right? Yeah, that's what we're doing. The size of the... Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mean, Barbara, that this would be the cube? Yeah. And then everything else is the yeah. Pull. Is is pulled through? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, is I'm that pulling what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm yes. pulling it through, and that's what it would be. Yes. So therefore, it would be transforming itself. Yes. Into its opposite. Yes. Okay. So therefore, you can see it. So this would be a cube in itself, mm -hmm. and these respectively its mm -hmm. sides. So by moving mm -hmm. that cube respectively, you would then transform it into something other than itself, mm -hmm. moving through itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's a uh, analogy taking on the qualities of a cube, having transformed itself within itself so that it turns upon itself, will create the object we have in front of us and therefore yeah. You can conclude uh, about fourth dimensional, three dimensional, and all. Can you pull it this way? You can pull it that way? Can you? Can you pull it on the diagonal? Can you pivot on the point instead of well, the line? Sure, but oh. um, you make a theory for that. Hmm. So it'd be C, 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 way that way? No, the different worlds. No. S then it looks like we sorry, see this. Circle? Sorry, that, go ahead. Is well, that become it? a circle then, or? Is that is the fourth dimension then a symmetry? Could you use symmetry mm -hmm. to apply to apply no, that? No, don't don't ask it. Yeah, why would you oh, ask? You that? don't mean it as a question. It's obvious. Well, it, well, okay. Right? I mean, you're saying are you seeing it or telling asking? I see it's a symmetry. There, you don't worry. You don't have to ask. Okay. Yeah. So, it looks like this. It's mm. really fascinating. Well, in one way we saw this that could be these could be the sides of a single cube, yeah. right? But now we're also saying that you can achieve a fourth dimensionality yeah. by uh, pulling it through itself, right? Yes. Okay. 
So it, it's this in a way functions in two different ways than the mm -hmm. drawing we're looking at. Right. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Because one side, it, and what we meant by it, Pierre used to make put an eye here and half of a smile, and then when you pull it through, you get the other half of the smile in the other eye. That's right. So, so showing That's that right. symmetry is a function yeah. of four dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Uh, um, Is the function it is so in order to achieve symmetry, there has to be four dimensions. I mean, I'm trying to remember the line. So oh, okay. From so this, from the book. So yeah. therefore, you would then have this figure, right? Right. And therefore, you'd then have a eye and a brow and a smile. Yeah, and a ear. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Therefore, all symmetrical movements, wherever you see mm -hmm. it, is an example of a fourth dimensional movement in three dimensional space. That's one. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. a good one. <laughs> that's a nice one. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Wow, and an analogy and its transformations is also fourth dimensional movement in a three dimensional space. Wow. So that there was one of the sides of the cube was missing. What was it, Barbara? You said that what's going to go in there? Oh, I didn't. On that diagram. Back side. The symmetrical. I think opposite. we would know by the because we have all the. I you know I don't know myself what would result, but you have here the. I think if you ended up with C B B A, that would match this corner A B B C, and so. If you folded them together mm -hmm. and wanted to complete it, you would have this and this symmetrically coming together mm -hmm. on the back but, side. Yeah, yeah. But wouldn't you have this and this as the two as the at top the bottom. and bottom of yeah. the yeah. 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 Because of that last surface? No, yeah, because yeah. Yeah. what you're asking is really this, which is you have to get you have to get one and and right. have fun with it. This yeah. Is, Let each of these be a... Okay. A Rubik. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I have a hard time with solving. Me have too. you ever... Huh? Have you ever solved one? I can solve like one side only. Oh. So I've far. never <laughs> solved one. Have you solved one day? And I used to have a student who could do two at the same time yeah. in less than a minute. Was oh my he God. autistic? Yeah. See, so no, now, you just bring if it. you put these in here, you'll see yeah. that that determines what the la what the final right, side is right, going to be. Right. Yes. Therefore, there's a yeah. Symmetry. You get the yeah. you get you'll determine this and this right. and right. this. I mean, That's they right. they will all determine the fourth yeah. panel. Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, not the in no, inner like not the inner terms, but like you'll get these those two, easy enough. See, A yeah. is A is A, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. they're all they're all blocks. They're not. Planes. Louder. Uh, each of them are blocks. No, yeah, not, not yeah, planes. Yeah, yeah. So block. then you can then see it easy, more, much more readily, and have fun. Actually, doing that's it. I think an idea that wasn't being presented, because then then you'd have a right. He's saying there's an interior cube here, right? Maybe that's what you saw as well, and therefore this is a block as opposed to a surface. And so I think if I follow the line of reasoning. Each of these would have four sides. Each of the four sides that's would right. have a letter. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. To articulate it further. Yeah. And there'd be right. blocks yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Thank you. You didn't see. That explains. So. Uh, I want to take a picture of that. Can we show the camera too? Would you mind holding that like up? Okay. Um, both. I think both pages would be good. I didn't mean to do that. No, we can just hold it. And uh, there's something interesting to do that. You'll see the interior set.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peculiar property. Thank you. Ooh, be but I forgot. Okay. And then there's another page. You forgot the peculiar yeah. property? Yeah. Or no. You're giving that's us a small homework assignment yeah. for those yeah. that are in the tree. I think that would go uh, both ways. Uh, a failed attempt. Yeah. Oh. And I can't really read it. Oh, what came to mind here was like a glove truth and what I remember in biology. When the sperm hits the egg, there's an involution of it. There's a what? Involution. It turns it in itself and continues to do that and forms a different, forms some, uh, some symmetrical images. I'll have to look that up, but I yeah, remember sure. it. It was by a lot. It was the as soon as it does, yeah. as soon as the sperm hits the egg, yeah. it starts that. Yeah, can you, you can even see the process in uh, chick embryology. Hmm. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, the same. Well, this is what happens here. As soon as the sperm hits the egg, hmm? uh -huh. there's a, a. It turns inward. It it turns hmm. into in itself through itself. And then it duplicates. Are you going to share it? Or? It's no. it's I, I should well, tell you that if you want to play with this, okay, if you want to play with this, it duplicates in the a background, which, you, which is worth having, Otherwise, we wouldn't have is C.H. Uh, Hinton, hmm. the fourth dimension. Hmm. And uh, Peter. D. Uspensky mm -hmm. Tertium Organum mm. Right? Right What's that say? I Hinton two, two names and two books. Yeah. C. H. Hinton and the Fourth Dimension and Uspensky. Yeah, Peter D. Uspensky, Tertium Organum, which is the third organ. He's applying Arist Aristotelian categories and therefore considering this as the third organum. Hmm. Thank you. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Now all of these books that Jeff bought and passed around, remember, had all of that, uh, what do they call them, divine geometry, or that, sacred that's all sacred? in the same bag. Sacred, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does this relate also to harmony? Sure. Would this relate also to harmony? Harmony? Oh, and how? What about these cookies, David? Of course. Okay. You want them? Harmony is only using three main analogies. That's all it is. The Greek diatonic scale is nothing other than three main analogies playing itself out methodically, and that produces the Greek diatonic scale. What are the three analogies? You want to know about it? I know someone who can tell you about it. Yeah. No. Virginia. 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 Oh, that's right. Right? Uh, the three main analogies that play themselves out in the Greek diatonic scale of harmony. The foundation of it. The foundation. It produces it. You know what they are. That's why if that Greek harmony of these three uh, magnificent mean analogies can also position the planets in the heavens relative to their positions to the sun, therefore it's a divine harmony and therefore music is playing the divine harmony of the spheres. Mm. Apart from that, it's... Trivial. Trivial. <laughs> For what purpose? Huh? For what purpose? <coughs> he liked music. If you what use purpose? the same Greek diatonic scale ratios, you can stick the sun and all the successive planets, and the relative distances from the sun is nothing other than a ratio which corresponds to the different notes on the musical scale produced by the Greek diatonic scale. And Gina can even tell you where you can see it, who writes about it, and it's as clear as a bell. But I forgot it. Once you understand... Right, Gina? Yeah, I can tell you where to find it. See? Well, once you, you better start talking to her, not me. Once you understand Here, I these things... I don't know. Fly out with him. 
Yeah, go ahead. Better. Uh, Regina. She's uh, a good source for it. What are these three? Uh... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Theoretic arithmetic. Thank right. You. Are you driving him back? By yeah. Thomas okay. Taylor. Oh, you are? Okay. Do you have a copy of this? Do I have a copy of it? Yeah, I have a copy of Thank it. You. Yeah. I think Thank Jeff you. does too. Thank you, David. And you if you can, David? you can get it online. Oh, yeah. Stop yep. the camera, I think. Um, How did I do this? Stop. Can you explain what he was just saying? I didn't know